right, welcome to another episode of Talking Grassroots, uh, your podcast all about local footy. I'm your host, Ricky Etheridge, and joining me, as always, Ricky Logan. Ricky, how's your week been, buddy? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Thanks for uh, having me in again. That's good, mate. That's good. Anything exciting happened for you during the week, or just another week in the life of Ricky Logan? Yeah, just basically just sitting at home, twiddling my thumbs until Super Bowl rolls around on uh, Monday. So. Yeah, so... Recording this Super Bowl's two days away, so once this comes out on Thursday, we'll we'll know the Super Bowl champions. And who are you backing in? Oh, it's hard to go past the Chiefs, man. They're uh, been too good for too long, and I think uh, on the big stage you got to go with the seasoned vets and the guys that have been there and done it. And and Patrick Mahomes always can deliver on the big stage. I think so. absolutely, mate. And uh, in a household that have t- two. Young daughters and one that is infatuated by Taylor Swift at the moment And I'm uh, all about that because as I've told the boys in the group chat There's been a couple of Mondays where the Chiefs have been on early And Oakland hasn't really been too excited about me watching my football And uh, all of a sudden Tay-Tay pops up on the screen And she's hooked watching some football Waiting for the next two seconds to see her So, uh, But we'll get stuck into it So first of all, Mark, we're going to just uh, got an, Well, not really an announcement to make Because we announced this about two weeks ago on our socials And for the... Uh, the fourth year in a row will be involved with Nations Footy Cup uh, this year down at Diggers Rest. So it's so four years now. So the first year we were down there, um, not as half back. We were down there as our um, the old podcast we used to do for the Footy Club, and we interviewed all the clubs and the co- other players and the coaches and stuff down there. Then second year we were down there conducting interviews and doing all the socials for them. First year as half back. Um, so the first one was at Craigieburn, second one was at Bundura, yeah, at Latrobe, and then last year we actually live streamed for the first time down at Williamstown, which was uh, full of difficulties. Um, not nothing, not their fault. It was just uh, unfortunate weekend. The council decided to do stuff, but this year we're back at Diggers Rest, live streaming the uh, Oval One. Um, should be a good day, mate. What you know? Talk us through what Nations Footy Cup is and what you've enjoyed about the previous three years we've done it yeah also well, nations footy cup was started by a couple of people that you know wanted to um create a tournament for all different nations and people to get to represent their country playing footy and sort of bring a you know a big community feel to it uh they i think they were involved in something similar beforehand um but they you know they wanted to make something sort of bigger and better and um that's what they've been able to do. It's grown over the last couple of years, and this year it's got uh, even more teams getting involved. So um, there'll be some new countries represented, which will be good to see. Um, but it gets some pretty good talent involved in it too, which is what's uh, exciting. And there's guys that are talked about as sort of gun local footy players and, uh, you know, Ahmad Saad, who's uh, Adam Saad's brother, who's probably one of the ones that, a lot of people go to watch because he's he's talked about as you know probably one of the best local players getting around for a long time and he's he was always exciting to go see him do his stuff and there's a few other boys alongside and you know you get some AFL players involved in Noah Bolter and uh, well they had what no no Bolter the last two, was it last two years I think Courtney Dempsey played a game for one of the teams uh, it's a good day out so. If you're not doing anything on the 25th of February, head down to Diggers Rest Recreation Reserve where you can see a great day of local footy. Or if you not can't get down, uh, just you can live stream it live on the Halfback Digital Media Facebook page and the Nation Footies Cup Facebook page. Uh, second thing before we get stuck in, as you know, Rift, uh, we deal with quite a few clubs' uh, social media game week content. And this week we locked in another club for 2024 in the Mountain South Football Netball Club. Um, rough couple of years for them previously, but from all reports, they've uh, got a few new signings and looking to turn around the uh, disappointing couple of years they've had in the Ballarat Football Netball League. So looking forward to working with them. And uh, speaking of local footy, I don't know why I say... I said this, I've listened back to the podcast last week and we were talking about the... Um, the winning strikes, losing strikes. And at the, before we got to the last subject, I've gone, oh, while, while we're talking about local footy, let's talk about this. And I'm just like, that's all the fucking show is, is talk about local footy. Why would you say that? <laughs> I had a bit of a chuckle when I was editing that. So uh, first bit of news we've got, this broke, 
on the 29th of January, as we said a couple of weeks ago, um, Southern Football Netball League Division One club Port Melbourne Colts have landed themselves a big fish with the uh, the signing of Melbourne Premiership player Michael Hibbard. Uh, big news, mate, coming out of the Port Melbourne Colts. Yeah, very big. I think he was uh, pretty one of the guys that was talked about a lot about you know who was going to get the signature of him and uh, yeah, Port Melbourne is is been one of those clubs that's um, done pretty well with signing some big names and. Uh, you know, they've got a fair bit of their own homegrown talent there as well that are pretty good. And, um, yeah, it's a sort of no surprise that that's the club he's ended up at. Um, so in this article from always, the... Always good for Southern to get... Absolutely. They've got, had a few big ones in the recent years. Considering that uh, I feel like it was not too long ago that I don't reckon there was an AFL player running around in Southern and now in probably the last maybe six, seven years I've had quite a few... Come through. I like to say maybe we started it when we got Fev to play a game for us. <laughs> we, we'll, we will get onto that topic of that type of stuff shortly. Uh, but in this article on the local footy leader, Herald Sun website, uh, written by Tyler Lewis, uh, goes on to say, he was the most prized signature in local footy. M- former Melbourne Premiership player Michael Hibbert was sought after by almost every club. Hibbert will don a familiar red and blue linking with South Melbourne power Port Melbourne Colts. He said prior to connection, he said a prior connection to JL Murphy Reserve meant the Colts struck out, stuck out from the rest. Of a few contacts and mates that are aligned to the club, it might be an opportunity to bring a couple of mates I haven't played with in, in years over. I know they went quite well last year. It's close to home. I didn't feel like travelling too far. Jack Love, who was affiliated with the club and has been for years, has been trying to get me. Trying to get me, and when I had to make a decision, it was the only one that stuck out the most. Um, so I feel like you know, getting a premiership player into the Southern Football Netball League, and especially down at uh, Port Melbourne Colts, can only really boost our Southern Football Netball League, I would assume. Yeah, for sure. And it's um, it's not like he won a premiership in the nineties or something. He's won a premiership quite recently, and and only you know not long out of the AFL system. So that's you know often you sort of hear you know. Players come across and they've been out of the system for a fair few years. So a guy that's not long out of it is is pretty big and would uh, yeah only helps boost the profile. And if you can bring some mates to the team and stuff as well, and um, yeah, it helps brings eyes to the league and and the club in itself. And I re- read in here as well, he's also f- applying to be a fiery. <laughs> so he'd be uh, yeah, I did say that fighting fires as well. What I love about this is that. Uh, what he has said, it doesn't matter what level of footy you play. If you, you know, he was one of the probably one of the better lockdown defenders in the past, probably six, seven years for the days. Yet he's uh, he's saying he wants to play forward. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, he doesn't matter what I reckon. I reckon even Dustin Fletcher or bloody uh, Alex Rance had come down to local footy, they'd be going, oh yeah, let's let's play forward. But uh, that actually that signing capped off a pretty big week for the Colts after they signed Justin Taylor and Chris DeLuca as co-coaches on the Tuesday night. So, big get for them. So, what we're actually probably going to do for this episode, we're probably just going to run through the big signings that we've heard in the last couple of weeks. I reckon probably maybe a week out from the start of the season, we'll, we'll sort of pinpoint when the first league starts. Now, a couple start back in March. Probably the week before that, I reckon we'll run through the updated list of the biggest signings around local footy because there have been some... Massive ones, and when you're getting articles coming out saying 102 transfers in the first day, the transfer window's open in one league itself. It's uh, going to be a pretty big couple of weeks, and I tell you what, the uh, the administration people from clubs have to put all those through. It's going to be a busy person right about the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and I think they, they 102 in the first week is probably just the beginning. I think that those would be ones that they're trying to just push through as quickly as they can before blokes change their mind and try and go somewhere else or whatever. So they'll get them through as quick as they can. But, yeah, there's quite a few big names that have moved to different clubs, which yeah. is interesting to see. And So the other one, uh, so this is only oh, about a week ago after this coming out. So Kane Pettifer has signed with the Nathal- Nathalia for, in the Murray League this oh. year. Um, so this article written by Shane Jones back on February 6th goes on to say, the crew of ex-AFL player Kane Pettifer still has one more chapter after he signed. What do you reckon? It's Nathalia? Nathalia. Nathalia. The former Melbourne will play for the Murray League Club after initially retiring last year after playing for Kyabram. 
His career at Cairo ended after being suspended for five matches for being found guilty of kneeing an opposition player in the head during the finals last season. Pettifer served three of his games, including the grand final, which the Bombers lost to a Chuka and Shepparton. Now, before we go on, it's a bit rough. I'm not, I don't, I'm not going to talk about the suspension, but I, as I've said previously, like I didn't quite enjoy when Clutch TV was running and um, sitting at the back having a beer watching the local footy and the Kyabram League... Not Kyabram, whatever league Kyabram's in, I think it's a golden... I should know this because I've watched so much of it last year. They were playing a lot of their finals at night, like a 5.30 kickoff for their seniors. So I was getting home from filming games on a Saturday, doing what I was doing, being able to watch them. And when they were saying that you know, he's hanging the boots up and he, he's done, I was actually a little bit shocked because he still looked like he had a fair bit left in the tank. So moving across to another club, I reckon, uh, goes to show that he probably does have a bit more left in his tank. Yeah, oh, no surprise. And I think if you've ended your season in a suspension in that way, you're probably itching to get back out there and prove your, you know, prove yourself and still still got it and, and finish the season in the right way that's following you. So the, uh, the so he's actually returning with one of his friends, the uh, director, Craig Callow, who explained Pettifer was always going to find a way to the purple once his time with Kyrie ended. For years I've been trying to get him across, but he wanted to play the highest level of country footy he could, Callow said. Kane certainly made the decision he was finished at Gol- Goulburn Valley, there we go, GV level, and he said he's l- he's like to finish his career at Nathalia. So he came across. Uh, Pettifer won't be at the club at the start of the season. Not only is he still to serve his suspension from last year, but he will fight Mitch Robinson in his fourth professional boxing bout in Adelaide during the AFL's gathered round in April. Now, I'm pretty sure I did see a, um, a bout that night and gather around, there's a few bouts on. I'm pretty sure Kane Corns is getting in the ring. Um, do you know who else is getting in the ring? No, to be honest, I, it's the first I'm hearing of uh, some some of these fights. And um, as a fan of boxing, I'm kind of getting sick of these kind of <laughs> these I, fights. I actually, honest. I actually was going to bring that up with you because I know that you are quite a big uh, combat sports fan. And boxing, obviously. Boxing fits into that, I, I guess. Yeah, um, no. well, I was always a boxing fan before I got into yeah. MMA and stuff. So yeah. And I do sort of feel like this stuff is sort of just Mickey Mouse and it's whatever. But So this is the card we've got, mate. So we've got Mitch Robinson versus Kane Pettifer, Anthony Rocker versus Corey McKernan, Kane Corns versus Nathan Brown, and Dane Swan versus Dale Thomas. <laughs> if that isn't one of the biggest cookie-cutter <laughs> load of BS... Boxing bouts you've ever heard about? I don't know. I don't know what is. Considering, considering Dave Swan and Dale Thomas have been mates for a long time, a part of the the Rat Pack as yeah. they were called back then, and yeah. Considering that, and actually, we actually will talk about this probably in the next episode because it's just tricked my memory. Considering we're talking about head injuries and all this type of stuff, I understand that it's a sport, but should we really be letting blokes without? You no, know, obviously, Kate. Kane Pettif is obviously going for his fourth fight, so he's got some experience. I've never heard Kane Corn box, and I can go t- t- tell you right now, if this list was put up with current AFL players or blokes just out of their thing, you can tell, guarantee Kane Corn to be SE- SEN grilling the crap out of it and saying it's a bad look for these players. But anyway, we're not here to talk about our AFL just yet, so we'll move back on to uh, Kane Pettif heading across. Um, so this article goes on to say... Uh, Pettifer's role will be twofold. Help the team win their first premiership since 2019. Jeez, they make that sound like it's a, <laughs> it's a fair way away. Um, and provide valuable experience for their kids. We've got a younger list in general. There's not many playing over the age of 30. So the experience component and some guidance for our younger forwards, Pettifer provides will be a lot of value. See, and now this is when... Um, when uh, ex AFL players, I don't care if they've just like uh, Hibbert just coming out the system into local footy or Pettifer who's been around for a while. When ex AFL players go to local clubs, obviously you know, we know they can be paid nicely, but when those players they buy into the values of the club and they help that the young kids coming through, that is more important than anything that these blokes can offer on field. I reckon. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. There's you know. It's you're talking about guys that have played at the highest level of the sport, 
So any experience they can bring and share and teach these young kids, if if they like you said, if they're willing to buy in and do that, if they're not just rocking up game day to have a few kicks and and collect a paycheck at the end of it, um, if they actually buy into the club, but it brings not only a buzz to the club because you you know everyone's excited. You're going to get blokes that want to get there and train more, and they want to sort of hang with the AFL player and 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 you know. Impress him, I, I guess they want to, you know, they want to make sure they're putting their best foot forward to stay selected in the seniors and you know, even guys that are probably twos players that um, hadn't saw, seen themselves as ones players might get that urge to sort of push themselves a bit more and try and take it a bit more serious. So, yeah, it's invaluable to the club and um, if, like you said, if you get the bloke buying in from the start, it's like having a coach out there, it's, you know, there's probably not many coaches that have, have had AFL experience in local footy. So to have a bloke out there playing with the guys, invaluable. I think another thing that sort of you don't, I actually have never really thought about this till just now. These AFL players, um, they come from systems that are elite. Every single player that they are playing with on training during the week, how they're meant to be looking after their bodies, playing on a Saturday, Friday night, Sunday, whenever – are the best of the best elite. These blokes now going back to footy clubs are probably, you know, they probably go into clubs where the top half of the talent are very, 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 very good. Maybe one or two blokes that you can sit there and go, yeah, they should be playing out help. But they're also going to be training with blokes who aren't even getting a gig in the reserves because they're just not good enough. No disrespect to those blokes, but they're going to be training with blokes that are, you know, can't hit sort of can't hit the side of a barn, but just love playing footy. I just wonder how they like it. I think it would take a lot of bring them back to earth a little bit and go, oh yeah, this is local footy. Yeah, yeah, I'd, yeah. You can have a, a very mixed bag at, at all the clubs. Like mm. no matter what club, you could you could go to the the very best elite local footy club, and there's still blokes that are missing out on a game of the twos because, like you said, they can't. <laughs> can't kick, yeah, but they don't want to go elsewhere because they love the club or whatever it is. And you need that. And you need those. If your club is to be successful, you need those blokes that 100%. just want to be there, play for the love of that jumper. Yeah, hundred percent. And and they're the guys that are always going to be there week in, week out. You know, most of the time, the the first bloke you see at training is a bloke who, you know, is the last picked in the team. But you know, the superstars are the ones that will rock up right before warm up starts and. You know, they're the first one off the track at the end of the night. But, um, yeah, you get a guy who's going to set a professional standard and, and show players what is required to to even just hang with that, that level of talent is, is... And most of the... And you need those blokes around because most of those blokes that are the ones that are just scraping into the twos or not playing, are the ones when it comes to about 2.30 up on the hill or wherever you... The bar is sinking their cans and getting stuck in and cheering you blokes on. So that's why, you know, they've got, you, know you need those blokes at the club. So move on to uh, another ex-AFL player moving clubs. Uh, out of East, um, a friendship formed overseas has landed the Bloods, Hillsville, with the prize signature of a goal-kicking machine. And with the other key recruits, Hillsville is set to be a big player in Outer East Division 1. So the uh, Hillsville have signed former AFL forward Aaron Edwards. Um, Edwards has been a bloke that has been sort of around the traps a little bit since he hung him up. He's been at Pines, St Kilda City. I feel like actually, I feel like he might have been somewhere else. But um, so this article written by Simon McAvoy goes on to say Hillsville is set to be a big player in Division One. <coughs> of Outer East League in 2024 after securing four experienced recruits. Former West Coast Eagles, North Melbourne, Richmond forward Aaron Edwards signed with the Bloods last week. <coughs> oh, excuse me. He joins Hills, Hillsville's other newcomers, Patrick Murray, a fullback from Wangaratta. His brother, Stephen Hayden Watkins. Steve played for Coldstream last year. Hayden played in a flag at Bonnie Doon. Uh, so this goes on to say that Hillsville coach Ryan Webster and Club Vice President Simon Gordon formed a relationship with Edwards while playing footy together in Bali. I reckon uh, the geckos, you reckon? Oh, yeah. I'd <coughs> say the geckos have probably been involved, yeah. Uh, oh, no, nah, I'll, I'll tell you where they would have uh, formed their film, sh- their film ship, their um, 
relationship, mate? I reckon the Masters Nines across in Bali. Yeah, yeah, it's probably the geckos are involved in that. Yeah. I uh, reckon one of Willow bloody uh, has crossed paths with these blokes yeah. at all. <laughs> uh, but anyway, we were able to make it work, It's so it's good. He'll play up forward. He'll slot into our forward line structure pretty well, I reckon. He's brought in, doesn't want to miss the game. We've got training routine structured, so it's going to be really, really good. <coughs> Edwards kicked 39 goals in 10 games at St Kilda City in Division 1 of the Southern League last season before crossing to Mornington Peninsula Division 1 Club Pines mid-season and slotting 26 goals in nine matches. Yeah, so that was his second time back at the Pines. So he, he was at the Pines before St Kilda yeah. City. So. Right, just hold on. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, as you said, he's, uh, that was his second time back at uh, Pines and I'm pretty sure he played in a couple of grand finals at the Pines in his first stint. Um, Edwards will help fill the void at the Bloods left by gun forward Sam Gibbett, who has gone to East Ringwood to test himself at a high level after booting 66 goals last year. Uh, it's a pretty big get for the Hillsville, and out in the Outer East Division 1, that's going to really help them secure and be a powerhouse out there. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what he's uh, got got left in a tank, and they're saying, you know, he's sort of buying into the club again, as we're speaking about, um, yeah, probably for a, the last couple of seasons at St Kilda City, he probably hadn't. Uh, sort of dedicated himself much more than turning up and playing. So if he's really buying in and, and getting behind the club, it'll be uh, great for him. And, yeah, what did he kick? Uh, 39, 20, 25 goals. Uh, 25, 65 goals in, uh, in last year. So hopefully playing the whole year at Hillsville, he might be able to get up to the 80-odd. I am... Um so we've got a connection with the Victorian Metropolitan Masters and we live streamed their grand finals last year and he was out running around for Diamond Valley in the Division One grand final and I I know it's old old man's footy or whatever, but geez, he was he didn't look like he was finished. He looked like he had a fair bit left in the tank and the Division One grand final was quite a high standard of footy to be in reality and he would look like he was uh really got Got a lot left in the tank. Yeah, for sure. He's he's been playing Division One Southern and then go to the Pines and still play that level. It's not like he's uh, he's fall, fallen off the perch altogether. He's still been playing a very high standard of football. And um, yeah, it'd be it'd be good to see him go out to another club and help them build up. And uh, I know when he first came to St Kilda City, him and and uh, Dane Swan, the buzz around their club at the time was massive. They had to actually tell blokes to stop turning up. Stop bringing you guys down because there was too many guys on the track at training. So, so moving on, uh, not a ex AFL player, but a club that we've got a good connection with, Burnside Heights, who we actually look after their socials for, have welcomed a trio of big name recruits. Uh, Burnside Heights has added a rafter experience to both boost its young list, including a former Sandful player. A reigning league best in Ferris and a forward who kicked 100 goals last season. That's some big talent to bring in. So, Berwick Heights, uh, so they play in the EDFL Division 2. So, you got Premier Division 1 and Division 2. So, they play in the bottom uh, bottom division. One of the biggest uh, biggest clubs on social media, though, they are. They've got fucking almost 5K followers. So, they're obviously doing something right out there. Uh, so, Burnside Heights... Maybe it's just using halfback digital media. <laughs> I don't think that's it. I think they were uh, up to that mark well before we jumped on board. Uh, anyway, Burnside Heights look set to be one of the EDFL's big improvers in 2024. The Bears have made their mark in the offseason with several impressive recruits who will provide valuable, valuable experience to Cole Harvey's young group. Reigning Northern League Division Three best in Ferris, Lachlan Evans headlines the hole as he moves makes the move from Heidelberg West. Evans won the medal last season after a dominant season in the ruck, polling 31 votes for the season. Joining him in the big man department will be Daniel Hoovey, who crosses from the Western Region Football League. Hoovey arrives fresh off a dominant premiership perform- uh, season with the Suns, also winning the league medal in Division Three goal kicking with 105 majors during the home and away season. Ex uh, ex Sandful talent Jaden Stills is also back in Metro Footy after signing from Merrigan in the Carbon District League, where he booted thirty five goals 
in 13 games for the Dogs last season. So now with the uh, that Hoovy from the Suns, I had to go out last season and film a game for West Footscray Women's and um, West Footscray were actually playing the Suns that beforehand, so the, uh, the women's were the final game of the day. And he's a big boy. I remember watching him because – and sort of how West Footscray's ground is, it sort of feels like you're quite close to the action. I was got there, had a look around, sort of sat myself behind one of the goals. And this bloke, I can understand why Burnside Heights went after him and how he get the 100 goals because he was a, uh, a, big, a big man and looked very, very good. Yeah, not – 105 goals in a season and I don't know if they made finals and he kicked more as well, but when you're kicking over 100 in a season, you are doing something right and uh, a big asset for any club to grab grab a player that's fresh off a 100-goal season. I'm sure he's keen to go you know, back-to-back 100 goals. Uh, be uh, very good for him and to get a player that's come out as a sample um, and, yeah, 30, you know, sounds like he's... Done all right, 35 goals in 13 games as well. So you're, you're adding a fair bit of firepower to your forward line. And across his career, he's actually... Uh, so 113 goals he finished up with last season in total. Um, so he's played 236 games of local footy. So he's pretty well-rounded. His first goal in the uh, Bears Orange will be his 700th career goal at local level. So that's... Uh, Pretty good. He's played. Uh, he, geez, he's travelled a fair bit, um, but you know, good on him. He's uh, kicking goals, and he's obviously a pretty well sought after player. Um, uh, sorry, I just lost my article here. Um, but also picking up a ex Sandful player will definitely, uh, I think, help boost the boost of them. As I said, a, a bloke playing just below the elite level will definitely, I think, help that young core of groups at, at the Bears. Yeah, to add two two decent forwards and one of them, like you said, is a big fella. It's um, it's only going to add firepower to that forward line. And if uh, you know, if you're trying to worry about this massive monster of a bloke kicking goals, and then all of a sudden you got this ex handful player running around, he's going to surely get on the you know a few crumbs here and there and snag a few himself. So it'll be a pretty potent forward line by the sounds of it. Yeah, so as it currently, as it stood on 2nd of Feb, um, I probably should know this being the fact that I do look after a bit of Burnside Heights social, but uh, they haven't been posted officially on the social uh, social medias, but the EDFL confirmed that the clearances had been lodged by the trio. So you probably are banking on them being signed off by now. Um, and Burnside Heights will open its season against Hadfield the standalone Friday night clash at home on April twelfth. So that should be a you know, pivotal viewing if you're uh, in that area. Yeah, uh, yeah, they'd be looking to put on a good show and uh, ten goal hole haul for the the big fella for his first game for the club would be nice. Yeah, so we'll move on now to an article written from Daniel Sinek. Uh, the ex AFL player is set to light up the Eastern League and. Eastern League, as we spoke about last week, is you know renowned for being one of, if not the best, well, top three. It's guaranteed top three or four leagues in the uh, the state. So we're going to just going to run through these ex AFL players that have uh, joined clubs, and we'll start with um, Kane Turner has joined the the Tigers down at Baldwin. They're listed in October after almost a decade at North Melbourne where he notched 130 games. The midfielder has linked with ex-Adelaide coach and current Baldwin mentor, Brenton Sanderson. Big get for Baldwin. A bloke straight out the system and wasn't wasn't a star of the AFL, but was definitely a you know a, a good player. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like, like we're saying, if you're getting a guy who's come straight out of the AFL, he's... Uh, He's going to be fit and raring to go and he's um, going to be able to bring a wealth of knowledge and, and those high standards to the club, which will be uh, great for them. So then the next one we've got uh, the Eagles down at Beaconsfield have signed Nathan Wright. The 29-year-old utility retu- reunites with former St Kilda teammates Brendan White and Darren Michigan. I've never even heard of that player, to be honest with you. 
at the Eagles in Division 1. Wright played 35 matches for St Kilda across six years from 2013 to 18 before linking with Southern Outfit Chelsea Heights for last season. So he's going, yeah. So he's going from Chelsea Heights to a division, division one, division, division two of Southern into effectively division two at the uh, East. And I know that you know, we we know a couple of people down at Beaconsfield, and they've been pretty bullish the last couple of years about the list that they've put together. But I reckon getting an XAFL player, adding that to their list, uh, is going to be pretty influential for them to be what they want to be. Yeah, definitely. I know they've they've also got a couple guys that are sort of VFL listed. Got, and I think they've got well. quite a few actually. So yeah, having having a guy that's that has played AFL and come you know again coming across it, it only helps boost that up. And when you have got guys that are VFL listed, they're probably trying to get themselves on an AFL list. So it'll, it'll only help add to them. And yeah, and I'm, and I'm also fairly sure they're um they underage 19s were a fairly, were a fairly good team as well so you got young kids coming through so and then the Blackburn so Premier Division have signed Toby Woolup the former Brisbane Lions midfield midfield forward had signed at the Burners full time after spending last season with Gold Goulburn Valley outfit Kyabram and Essence VFL side Following stints with Carlton Reserves and Old Scotch, the 193-centimetre talent was selected by the Lions with pick 41 in the 2017 National Draft, but didn't crack a senior game in three seasons at the club. Now, yes, didn't get a game, but if you're getting picked 41 in the draft, you've obviously got some very, very good talent. Yeah, obviously it came uh, you know, with a bit of, fair bit of expectation. You're getting picked in the 40s. Um, yeah. It's at 193 centimetre, they probably had a couple guys that might have, you know, 2017 Brisbane wasn't travelling too well at that time, so they probably had some higher picks that have. Uh, yeah, so you got know, so he's picked up in 17, so his first season's 18, and they've been Brisbane have been on the way up pretty quickly since then. So obviously pretty hard to break into that team. You know, think about it, it's what that's what four years ago, five years ago, and they've just played in had a grand, couple, couple playing the grand final football, and a. Um, Trades across that time as well. So. Played in the grand final and probably for the last two years before that were always, I think they were always top four, I'm pretty sure, top six of those couple of years and they would yeah. just start choking the finals. But anyway, Doncaster East have signed Tim O'Brien, so one fresh out of the system. Phone calls were surprisingly sparse from local clubs in the pursuit of O'Brien's signature as his time at the top finished at the end of last season, but the Lions pounced. The ex Hawthorne and Western Bulldogs forward took in a forward took in 115 matches across a decade. I just think it's amazing that no other club bar two contacted Tim Doncaster, reach president Peter Sowsby said. I just sort of read as to that that no one thought they could get him, or they thought he was going back somewhere, or yeah, I don't know. Yeah, probably uh, just a little bit overlooked and uh, sort of. Uh yeah, so like you said, some clubs probably thought he's ungettable, probably still trying to get back into the AFL. You just never know. Um, it never hurts to make the phone call, and uh, Doncaster got lucky and made the phone call and got a fairly talented player, which would be uh, good for them. So Montrose, who are in Division 1, have signed former Gold Coast son Brody McLaughlin. Uh, so the former Gold Coast son is set to play state league footy for the Williamstown this season, aligning with the D's as his local club in Division One. McLaughlin won a spot on Gold Coast Gold, Gold Coast AFL list for 2023 after lighting it up for Frankston. He helped the Suns to the VFL flag last year with 55 goals to tie for the Jim Frosty Miller Medal. He was delisted from the AFL club in the last season. So he's coming in, you know, into Montrose, obviously, will probably, well, I imagine he's going to spend a very a lot of time at Williamstown from the sounds of it. But coming in off the back of a 55-year goal season, winning a flag in the uh, for Brisbane Lions twos, not a bad get, not, not a bad play to get if they can get him from Williamstown at all. And it just shows how hard it is to crack an AFL team. You got Gold Coast bottom, you know, bottom side, he's kicked 55 goals in their twos to help them win a flag in their twos, and still can't crack the ones. No, nah, so it gets, gets the list. It doesn't even get looked at to yeah. keep his spot on the twos to get up. But nice to see that he, uh, you know, as a as a Franks and Dolphins fan as I am, um, a, you know, Franks and Dolphins player being so highly regarded, which is nice. Um, 
Move on to Norwood now. So Norwood have signed Tom Highmore. So the former St Kilda defender has linked with the VFL outfit Port Melbourne, but has aligned to the Premier Division club. The 25-year-old played 16 matches for the Saints between 20 and 23 after his selection at pick 45 in the 20, 2020 draft. He was delisted in October. So th- this is one thing that you notice with a lot of these, uh, not a lot, but some of these blokes coming out of the AFL, especially like the younger blokes, 25, they will end up with themselves at a VFL club and then find themselves a home club. So, yes, Norwood have got him, but realistically they might not get him. And that's just that's the fact. Yeah, you got a bloke that's 25, still got a chance to play a high level of footy. But if they can get him for even a handful of games, can qualify for finals if they make it, big get. Yeah, definitely. And, um, again, he's come, come straight out of the system, so he's, his standards would be right up there. And um, if you... These guys that are pushing VFL, they're trying to get themselves back into an AFL list, I'm guessing. So his, his standard will be pretty bloody high. And even if he doesn't play with the team that much, just being down on training and, and bringing that standard to the club will help a lot. Yeah, the last one, and this is a big one because this... Um, so Luke Dunstan has joined South Belgrave. So Luke Dunstan joins the Division One club straight out of the AFL system where he played 121 matches ac- uh, across St Kilda from 2014 to 21 before finishing his career with Melbourne. He'll head up South Belgrave's midfield as assistant coach this season. A knee injury last year forced his retirement and a playing role could be a little while off according to South Belgrave coach Heath Black. We've got to be really respectful of where he's at, Black said. Selected by the Saints with pick 18 in the 2013 National Draft, Dunstan played most of his footy in the VFL across 22 and 23 with Melbourne VFL affiliate Casey winning a premiership in 22. Black said the 29-year-old can be an an ace card if he returns to action. Statistically, if you want to have a look at VFL stats over the last couple of seasons, you could argue that he was the premier midfield in the VFL. That's how significant the signing is. Now, this is a pretty big signing for South Belgrave as they, I think they've only lost one game in three seasons. I think they've, they've literally come from bottom of Eastern and were, if if Eastern hadn't have restructured their leagues at the Premier from Division 1 wasn't was going up to Premier, they would have literally gone from the bottom division to the top division consecutively. They would have won a three-peat from the bottom into Premier Division, but unfortunately they got beat. The only game they lost all season was in the grand final last year, um, which was to Mitchum. Um, so they're going to be looking at bouncing back. And yes, he might not be on the on the park for a while, but that's a big signing just from experience, experience wise. And Heath Black is is South Belgrave's new coach, so he's done pretty well to find his first uh, big signing. Yeah, and, and you know, even if he uh, doesn't get get on the park until later in the year to have a guy who's who's been a pretty good midfielder through through his VFL career um, coaching your midfielders at, for her, what's probably a pretty talented midfielder already if they they've won done that well over the last few years he's he's going to be a great asset to them and then could cap off the you know the mm-hmm. season finish with you know six or eight games or whatever he needs to to qualify for finals and run into finals nice and fresh so a very big asset for them. Yeah, so from the sounds of all that, it sounds like it's going to be a pretty good year in the Eastern Football Netball League. So I reckon we might wrap that up here for this week, mate. But before we go, I do have a little announcement to make, which I actually haven't even told you this yet. So obviously, part of what we do is game filming and live streaming and stuff like that. And we've got uh, a bit of a special going on at the moment. Uh, so as it currently stands, you know, obviously I've got um, a couple of daughters. So my my head has really moved towards women's local footy in the past probably three, four years. Uh, and as you know, our, our base game filming is 300. Uh, we're actually going to run a special where you can get your women's game live streamed for the cost of a normal game filming. So we throw in your bucks, get your, get, you know, get your game filmed. We can incorporate... Um, or integrate live commentary into you have someone from your club that you want to uh, get on the comms. But for the next probably next four weeks, we'll be offering women's football live streaming for the cost of local filming. So three hundred dollars, get your game live stream onto you, you, your club's Facebook, our Facebook, YouTube, wherever you want to stream it to. And I feel like it's a good way. You know, as you'd be fully aware, women's footy does get overlooked a little bit when it comes to the 
the uh, the comp the league. Not no, I shouldn't say overlooked. Overlooked's probably the wrong wording, but when leagues are sort of putting out match of the days and stuff like that, it's always blokes footy. Yeah. So I figured, you know what? Let's shine some light on women's footy. And the other thing, uh, a lot of leagues nowadays will play Good Friday. Uh, same deal. We're going to live any any Good Friday games. We're going to live stream for the cost of game filming. So if you, you know if you've got a Good Friday game on and your league either doesn't supply live streaming options or doesn't supply game filming, get in contact with us at info at halfback digitalmedia.com or shoot us a direct message at Halfback Digital Media on Facebook, Instagram and book yourself in for some Good Friday footy and uh, you know, live stream it out to your, your supporters that have decided to go away for the weekend. Yeah, sounds good. So we'll see you next week on Talking Grassroots. Uh, I've been your host, Ricky Ettridge, and we'll see you next week. Gotcha.